you, let me bring in David Whalen. He is the brother to Paul, and of course, Paul remains detained in Russia. David, I know this is, uh, it's got to be a, just an excruciating day. On one hand, it's, you, there's some light, okay, that means negotiation is possible. On the other hand, your brother's still there. Um, you've heard from a lot of government officials today. It's my understanding that the administration reached out. Are you at all reassured? Well, I think we've always been confident that the Biden administration was trying to do something, and uh, we are confident that they will continue to try to do something. And I think the question we have now is with uh, Konstantin Yaroshenko and Viktor Boot going back to Russia and the U.S. having apparently gone through a list of other uh, concessions that they might have uh, gotten Russia to agree to, and they didn't, um, it's not clear what the U.S. government can provide that will bring Paul home. Do you have a sense, that are, are all your efforts focused on the government representing these efforts, or are you now trying other avenues to get his release, to secure his release? I think if Paul had been a hostage with a terrorist organization, it might make sense to use third-party interlocutors or mm -hmm. um, other uh, other agencies. It's it's the U.S. government, I think, who is our, our primary focus, because they are the ones who can finally make a decision uh, to give the Russian government uh, what they want. And I think that's a huge change with the wrongful detention cases, is that we're now dealing with nation states uh, facing off against each other rather than random terrorist organizations. I, David, you've probably heard me questioning others saying this. From an outsider's perspective, my guess is perhaps yours, no matter, whatever the Russians think your brother was doing uh, there, I, I'm trying to figure out why an arms dealer whose nickname is the Merchant of Death wasn't good enough. Yeah, you know, it's a head-scratcher. I don't know either. And uh, I know that the, uh, the Russians are, or I should say the Kremlin is paranoid about uh, parity. And uh, it may be that now that they have put a label on Paul, I think as uh, uh, the correspondent who was saying earlier, uh, they called Paul a spy and they, they will keep him until they have to redeem him for a spy that the U.S. or some other country uh, uh, secures. And, and that may happen. I mean, we know that uh, Norway is holding someone who they suspect it to be a Russian spy. We know that Sweden has just arrested a couple mm -hmm. uh, who may be uh, Russian spies. And so it may be that there are Russian spies out there who can be uh, coined and uh, used to bring Paul home. I was just going to say, is that at this point, uh, I know all the denials that your family has, all the denials from Paul, all the denials from the U.S. government, but if it if that's what it takes to say, okay, fine, spy for spy, let's go, you think the Russian government n needs that kind of, as you called it, parody? I do. I think they're uh, schoolyard bullies. Uh, so if you hit them three times, they're going to want to hit you three times. And it really just comes down to numbers. They're only doing exchanges uh, at the Ukraine war, you know, nine for nine. It's just crazy. They're, they're, they're simplistic view of this sort of thing. And I think that that may be what it boils down mm -hmm. to is that um, if, if it's going to be a trade, it has to be something that has the same labels on both sides. Even if, uh, as uh, our family believes, and I think is, is, is true, uh, Paul's a tourist and he's not a spy, but it's about the labels and it's about the uh, perception. Um, look, keeping this in the headlines, the, the WNBA players worked real, you know, kept Brittany Griner, kept this in the headlines. I, I imagine, you know, plenty of us in the reporting world here in Washington have tried to do our best to keep keep attention on this, but I assume that's your biggest fear now, is that suddenly there's less focus and less attention. Not really. I think uh, it is when a wrongful detainee is first uh, taken hostage, uh, that is the family's biggest concern. And I think it's it's one of the challenges when you are first being uh, thinking about advocating. Do you even say anything? Do you try to get media attention? And I think in general now, when you're dealing with nation states who are taking hostages, you do want to engage the media immediately so that you can start to get the government machinery working. But I think we now know that all the cogs are spinning at the White House and mm -hmm. in state and uh, so on. And uh, that um, I'm not as concerned as I used to be about media attention dying off, um, so long as I'm confident that the U.S. government is continuing to work. And if, if they aren't, then I think we will do what we can to uh, uh, encourage them uh, with public uh, perception and media to continue to do the work. I know earlier today you had not uh, communicated with your brother, but I thought your, your parents had. What, what is your understanding of his condition and how he's being treated? Well, I think he's doing the best he can. He has uh, come up with a number of survival tactics to get through. He seems to be generally healthy. He gets up every morning and sings the U.S. national anthem, uh, in part, I think, because he's a, a patriot, and in part because he wants to annoy the heck out of the Russian guards. <laughs> and uh, I think he, he has come up with survival techniques to get him through day to day. But a day like today is, is shattering. I mean, it, it shatters yeah. your mental health and your approach. And uh, I think that came through on his phone call to our parents today. David Whalen, um, 
you know, hang in there. I, I hope uh, the confidence you have in the government uh, is uh, returned. Uh, let's just say, I think we all we all want to see that. David Welland, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.